Hello everyone. This video is going to work through uh, what's called a classical train problem where we have two trains and they're approaching each other at some speed and there's some distance between them and we want to find out the time it takes for them to meet and their position when they meet. Okay, so there's our scenario. We have train A and train B. They're separated by a total distance of 700 miles. The speed of train A moving to in this picture to the right is 20 meters per second. The speed of train B moving to the left is 30 kilometers per hour. And we want to know when, what time from the start time and when and where they will meet. Now we're making a few assumptions already. We're going to say their speed is constant. There was no acceleration to get to these speeds. They're already going that fast. And it's not going to change over the distance that they travel before they meet. So then we want to look at what do we know about the system itself? What what can we surmise about what's going to happen to figure out when they might meet? So let's say, uh, what do we know? The, the trains are going towards each other. So when they meet, they will have traveled. Their combined travel distance will be equal to the total separation distance. So this is the key key thing to figure out in this problem. So we know that the total distance is equal to the distance traveled by A, where I'm calling distance S. Um, speed is speed. Velocity vector will be V. And we don't have to worry about acceleration because there's none in this particular problem. But And the distance traveled by B, uh, the, so the total distance is going to be tr speed, the distance traveled by A plus the distance traveled by B, where distance is equal to a velocity vector times the time that the train traveled. So we can rewrite this where S total is equal to the magnitude of the velocity of A times the time before they meet plus the magnitude of velocity B times the time before they meet and then we can pull out the time and make this equal to uh, the magnitude of velocity A plus the magnitude of velocity B here. So then we can solve for the time is equal to the total distance divided by the magnitude of velocity A plus the magnitude of velocity B. Now the absolute position will depend on the coordinate system that we choose. So I'm going to say that x is increasing from left to right and x is 0 at A. Alright, so that means that we need to define, so we need to define the coordinate system, then we need to define our, our knowns. So we know we can define the velocity vector at A is equal to 20 meters per second and the velocity vector at B is equal to negative 30 kilometers per hour and S isn't really a vector it's just a distance so you don't have to give it a direction per se if you don't want to so one thing we want to do is match units so it's very important uh, we need to write this down anyway because S is equal to 700 miles. We have meters per second, kilometers per hour. I like to write S's in cursive to keep them from being confused with fives. Meters per second, kilometers per hour, and miles. So we're going to, I like to convert everything to SI units as most engineers do. So we're going to convert everything into meters per second and then do the math and then put it back into miles. Uh, so that we get the answer kind of in the units that we found them. So to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, you would have 1,000 meters per one kilometer, kilometer, however you want to say it. And there are 3,600 seconds. Uh, this needs to be one hour over 
3,600 seconds. I think I can actually race on here. That's fun. So we can go one hour, 3,600 seconds. This is equal to negative uh, 8.3 repeating which we're going to approximate to 8.3 meters per second negative and to convert miles we're going to go from miles to kilometers 1.6 kilometers per mile and then kilometers per two to meters So that's going to be equal to uh, 1.12 times 10 to the 6th meters. Forgot to write that in cursive. Hmm. And so we can solve for our time is equal to our distance, 1.12 times 10 to the 6th meters over the magnitude of 20 meters per second plus 8.3 meters per second and this works out to 39576 seconds that's more where it's important when you're not dealing with units, you want to keep track of seconds as not a 5, whereas this would change the order of magnitude if you left this as a S and forgot it was an S and made it a 5. So one thing you want to do with this answer is check to see if it's reasonable. So if you convert this back to units, or to hours, it's right about 11 hours. So it takes these two trains approximately 11 hours to travel 700 miles. So to think about this in terms of what we might do on a regular basis, if we were to drive 700 miles in, in a car averaging a speed of 50 miles an hour, it would take about 14 hours. So that's pretty close. Same order of magnitude. I'm going to call it reasonable. So the time it's going to take them to meet is 39,576 seconds. And then we want to find where they're going to meet. So to do that, fairly straightforward, we can just determine the position of train A at time at the time when they met. So velocity of A times T, this is equal to 20 meters per second times 39.576 seconds. And that's equal to 7 nine one five two zero meters and we can convert that back to miles one kilometer is a thousand meters and one mile is one point six kilometers which that's equal to 494.7 miles and so we want to check and see if this answer is reasonable and we say well it's a little over or it's over halfway in between the two trains and this train is moving faster than train B so it should go more than half the distance and so it seems pretty reasonable to, to me so this is our answer for where the trains will be when they meet on the coordinate system we chose. I hope you find this video useful and I hope you have a lovely day.